Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Weather. My name is Mr. G, also known as Unk, as some of you have affectionately begun to call me on TikTok. A few of you have done it on YouTube, but it's mostly been a TikTok thing, and I appreciate that because Unk is a term of, of endearment in the black community for chubby black guys, older black guys like me, so I appreciate it most of the time. Most of the time, it can be. Sometimes unk could be stupid or unk can be an insult if unk is kind of dumb. But but I I know I ain't none of that, so I'm going to take it as y'all giving me a compliment, all right? But let's go on with our weather forecast, this portion of the weather forecast today. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the radar from different parts of the country where we're having some interesting weather taking place. So right now we have this area of light snow that's moving across the upper Midwest and into the Ohio Valley and it's going to be starting to spread into Pennsylvania as you can see Pennsylvania right there there's the state of Ohio uh, Indiana and Illinois and we're also looking at Missouri right here Iowa right there and the snow is moving out of Iowa now moving into uh, southern Indiana Illinois and into Ohio and Pennsylvania and we're going to be looking at that snow eventually making its way into the mid-Atlantic so we're going to see some snow around the DC Baltimore maybe into Philadelphia as well might get a few flakes up near New York City Brooklyn and Queens and the uh, Long Island area so we might see a few snowflakes uh, this snow is dropping pretty much anywhere from about one to maybe three, four. Some areas might be picking up five inches if it's a little bit higher. So we're seeing, uh, we're looking at a winter weather advisory across this region. That's why you see those air counties highlighted in blue. That's a National Weather Service alert there. So we have a winter weather advisory over much of the mid Atlantic this afternoon, right now, as we have this. Uh, area of uh, disturbed weather that's going to be bringing some snow but we're looking at rain further down to the south and there's some rain showers here through Tennessee, Kentucky, southern West Virginia but as we get to the uh, Tidewater area, or not the Tidewater but the uh, uh, what's it called? What's this area called? I forgot this area right here. It's, um, it's Appalachia, it's Appalachian, the Appalachian Mountains but that region is called something else too. If anybody know what this region right here is the cold country area, and I know it's on the tip of my tongue and I just can't can't get the word out for what this uh, particular spot right here is. It's, uh, it's encompassed Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, uh, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee. Uh, I almost said it, I almost said it, I almost said it. It starts with an S. It's like a, a sh, sh, sh. It starts with a sh. And it's right on the tip of my tongue. And I know the area and I just can't remember what it's called. I'm getting through the video on them and remember and blur it out. Like, oh, yeah, it's called. Um, that's what. Anyway, so we're seeing this area of snow and some rain moving towards Appalachia. And that's going to be across from West, West Virginia and Virginia. Maryland, you know, Pennsylvania as well. We're going to see some of that snow over the mountains of North Carolina and Kentucky and maybe some rain showers down across Tennessee and uh, as well. So some rain to the south, no snow on the north end of the system. So now let's go up further up the coast to the northeast or to New England and take a look at some snow showers that's taking it up place in that area. Alright, so now we're taking a look at the Northeast and New England, Shenandoah. Shenandoah. I told you it was right on the tip of my tongue, and I was going to remember it later in the video. Shenandoah. That's what that area is called. In the Appalachian Mountains, around uh, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, and Kentucky, Tennessee, right there in the app along the mountains, the spine. That's called Shenandoah. Okay, Shenandoah. All right, but we are looking at uh, some wind advisories down here across uh, near uh, Rhode Island and Boston and Connecticut. So Massachusetts down here through Rhode Island and Connecticut here in upstate New York and through southern Vermont, New Hampshire. There's a wind advisory across this area. We also have our winter weather advisory here over the, uh, we have uh, 
The Canadian Weather Service also have their advisories for winter weather here over the St. Lawrence River Valley. So we're seeing some light snow showers here along the U.S. and Canadian border from Ontario and into Quebec, which is up here, guys. So we're seeing some light snow showers. And this area, is we're generally seeing anywhere from about a trace up to maybe three inches on, on the high end. But this stuff is very scattered, very widely scattered. So some light snow showers, um, three inches is going to be what you see on the high end. So here is where we can see where those brighter whites are, those brighter colors right in here. Uh, here through upstate New York, through the uh, Catskills and the um, Adirondack Mountains here, where we can see those higher snowfall amounts. And you can pick up maybe three inches on the high end there. And let's take a look down around maybe the Great Lakes in Ontario, Canada. We're going to go back a little bit to the west a little and show you what's going on around Michigan, maybe Wisconsin as well, where we got some snow showers in that area. And I'm standing in front of it so you can't really see it because it's on the, I can see it over my corner on behind me. So let's jump and take a look at that real quick, okay? So now we're here over the upper Midwest and this region is also called the Great Lakes region and we have some snow showers a little bit of lake effect snow going on here but this stuff is very light with this lake effect snow we're seeing some lake effect snow up here off of lake superior over northern um, wisconsin and over the upper peninsula of michigan which includes the communities of south saint marie and um over here uh what's the name of that other town marquette so marquette saw st marie we're seeing some snow showers and we're seeing some snow up here along over northern michigan we got some snow coming off of lake michigan some lake effect snow but it's not too bad it's going to be about three inches for the most part as well we're not looking at heavier snow we're not looking at record snowfall i know buffalo often gets hit very hard with that lake effect snow but they got a little bit but not really record by any stretch of the mean we might see five inches in some areas but generally one to three inches of snow of this lake effect that's going on right here across northern michigan so traverse city is up here and also i used to work for a company called patagist and I think their main office is in, um, their corporate office is in northern Michigan. It's in uh, right down here near Grand Rapids, Michigan. So Grand Rapids, uh, Tra Traverse City, we're looking at some lake effect snow. And we're also looking at some lake effect snow down across southern central and southern Michigan as well. And Gaylord is also up here. A friend of mine's parents used to live in Gaylord. So I know where Gaylord, Michigan is, mostly because of her. But here we are, we're looking at some snow down here across central Michigan off of the lake. So we got a little bit of lake effect snow down across central Michigan. Actually, Grand Rapids is further south, so I'm wrong about where it is. It's further to the south, but they are picking up some lake, lake effect snow as we're seeing Grand Rapids. But Traverse City is up here. But let's go on to another part of the country. Now we're going to take a ride down to the south, to the Gulf Coast, take a look at those showers and thunderstorms along the coast and that rain down in Texas. We're going to start there. All right, guys. So before we get to the Gulf Coast, we're going to take a stop off here across the Mississippi River Valley into Tennessee. But we're looking at some severe thunderstorms right now down here across the... Uh, Mississippi River Valley area and Memphis we have severe thunderstorms in the area that one right there indicates one inch diameter hail being picked up by the radar radar indicated one inch diameter hail here over Tennessee or eastern no this is eastern Arkansas I believe and because Memphis is right there what's to the east of Memphis Arkansas so we're seeing that uh, severe thunderstorms there are also some thunderstorms with some more one inch diameter hail so let me stand over here so that you can see the other patch of thunderstorms coming out of the plains right now with some more one inch diameter hail and that is coming uh, on across yeah coming out of north of Arkansas so this is southern Missouri right here this is southern Missouri and we're seeing those 
uh, that line of thunderstorms that are moving toward the east there, but that's also producing some one inch diameter hail. So I would classify these two as severe thunderstorms because what is a severe thunderstorm? When does the National Weather Service uh, declare a severe thunderstorm? When it has one inch diameter hail and winds in excess of 58 miles per hour. Now, it doesn't have to have both. It just has to have one or the other. Most of the time, they're going to have both, but they, they can have 58 plus mile an hour winds, but not the big enough hail, so, and they can still trigger a severe thunderstorm warning. Or you can have the hail, but not the high winds, and still trigger a severe thunderstorm warning. Heavy, heavy rain does not trigger severe thunderstorm warning. But now, flash flooding is a component of severe thunderstorms. But you have a high threshold for that to t become a, 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 a thing for severe thunderstorms, okay? So we are looking at some thunderstorms down along the Mississippi River Valley there, Arkansas through Tennessee and Missouri, where we're seeing thunderstorms move across. So now we can go down to the Gulf Coast and take a look at the rain going over East Texas, Northern Mexico, and along the Gulf Coast. So now we are down across the Deep South where we're over South Texas and Northern Mexico. That is the uh, Rio Grande River right there. Uh, this is where Laredo, Texas is right right there so we are looking at those showers and some thunderstorms as well but i don't see uh any indications over texas of any severe weather right now this is mostly rainfall maybe some embedded thunder and lightning is in there but i'm not seeing anything severe but if you go up the coastline go over up the texas coast down over to Louisiana. So this is Louisiana right here. So we are looking at uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Lake Charles, Monroe. Now my family comes from a little town called Rayville in Louisiana. That's where my mama was born and my grandmother was born and my daddy was born in Monroe. So I got all these folks and I got uncles and stuff and aunties and cousins down in Louisiana. Got one uncle that's a trucker down in Louisiana. So um, we have uh, flash, we got flooding war watches and warnings here across Alabama and lower southern Mississippi. Uh, we got the Florida Panhandle right here. We have flooding because we have rivers running very high because we've seen very high amounts of rainfall down across the southeast over the last several months here because of this our, our very strong our super El Nino so we've seen a lot of wet weather across the Gulf Coast and the deep south so a lot of rivers are running high because of runoff from melting snow over the Appalachian Mountains and rain across the um, the mid-south so lots of rain so lots of rivers down close to the uh, ocean here down to these what they call river deltas because the rivers run into the ocean so we're seeing a lot of high rivers lakes running high it's already wet down in this area so the added water from the extra amounts of precipitation and snow melt runoff running down toward the south toward the, the gulf of mexico and the atlantic if the everything flows that way so we're seeing a lot of that right now so those yellow stripes are because of river flooding and high rivers so we have flood watches around rivers across the south all over the south including the mississippi river so now we are going to take a look at the west coast we're going to start up in the Pacific Northwest, maybe around Seattle. We're going to go down to Portland and then into Northern California before we end this video, okay? All right, everybody. So welcome to the Pacific Northwest. We're taking a look at Washington and Oregon. This is the Columbia River right there, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a blue going through. That's the Columbia River. So this is where the beautiful Columbia River Gorge if you ever go to the Pacific Northwest, you want to take a trip and check out the Columbia River Gorge. It's a beautiful area. If you ride the Amtrak, the Empire Builder from Seattle, from Portland, not from Portland, or you take it from Portland and Seattle, it will go along that area. There's the train tracks and it will travel along that area. So the Portland route 
from the Empire Builder because the train splits into two and I think it um, reconnects in Spokane back as the uh, the seven and the eight but the seven goes to no I think the eight goes to Seattle and the seven goes to Portland so if you take that to Portland then you can go on the Columbia River Gorge it's beautiful. It's I love the Pacific Northwest. I like the geology of the Pacific Northwest because you all know not just am I a meteorology person, I'm also a geology. The other degree, I'm working on a dual degree, so I'm, I'm meteorology and geology. So we also call it geoscience. So that is what I care about is that, and I, that's one of the things that I love the, uh, um, they have the, the Crater Lake in Oregon. So if you ever can visit Crater Lake, I would highly, highly, highly advise to do so. It is a caldera. It's, it's a volcanic lake. And so it's, the water is so blue. It's so, that up is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. But the geologic processes took millions and billions, millions of years to create. So please, that's the kind of areas you need to protect so if you ever go to Yellowstone, I, it really, I, my, my wife and I are planning to go to Yellowstone in a couple years because we're going to Alaska where we're dragging some other family members who want to go to, to Alaska again. Now we went to Alaska next summer, but we're going to go back to Alaska because her mom and her sister wants to go. Now she got another sister want to go, but other, some other things with her and she can't go. But, um, but yeah, so you got to go. Um, I, 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 it just kind of bothers me that as a scientist that um, the tourism to the yellow I almost, part of me wishes that Yellowstone would be off limits to the public some places would be off limits to the public because man it's just true they don't leave the animals alone they don't know how to act with the animals you know I would be like okay you're not allowed I could say okay you can go but you can't bring your cell phone in the park <laughs> you know no cell phones because we don't need you out trying to take pictures next to the elk or next to the bison please 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 leave the wildlife alone it just drives me absolutely bonkers these tourists and part of me as a scientist wishes that they would not allow the public in the national parks because you know the, but you know I agree I get it it's cool you know it, I get it but it's destructive and it's disruptive to the natural order of the park you leave garbage everywhere I know maybe he, they blame <laughs> so I, I'm just gonna leave it alone I'm gonna leave it alone but we're gonna talk about the weather forecast here we're gonna look at this uh, active weather here in the Pacific Northwest we have some areas of rain associated with this frontal boundary. See this warm front? So this warm front goes off the coast and it's attached to an area of low pressure out that way. And there is a cold front right here. So we have an occluded front basically where this overruns this. And when it does that, it's an occluded, it becomes an occluded front. So uh, we have uh, these showers here off the coast because of that warm front that's approaching. So we have some light showers here and light showers up here uh, off the Puget, over on the other side of the Puget Sound. This is Elliott Bay up here near Seattle, um, Mount Olympia, we got Olympia. Here is the Cascade Mountain Range here. So we have our flood, our flood. Uh, this is where we have a potential here for avalanche. This is an avalanche watch here. So we have a lot of snow in the mountains. So a lot of heavy wet snow and it's not packed down yet. So it's very uh, uh, easy to have avalanche right now at the higher peaks. So again, but now let's go further down the coast, maybe over Oregon, Portland, and maybe even Northwestern California and take a look at any precipitation that might be um, uh, moving in because we're going to be watching this area through the weekend because that heavy rain is going to move in with these storm systems and we're going to see a lot of flooding, a lot of high winds, so it's going to be a lot of action at the beach. I'm going to look for high, high uh, waves with 
a breaker is like 15 feet high we're going to be looking at high swell so it's going to be dangerous if you have a small boat like a fishing vessel or like a, a small pleasure boat so um any small craft is going to be some very rough seas and it may even be bumpy for the bigger ships like cruise ships but not many cruises right now because any cruises right now will either be going to Hawaii, which you will go out into where calmer waters are, or up to, normally we'll be going to Alaska, but not this time of the year. So anything will be going out to Hawaii or south towards Mexico. But even going to the south, you still got to go along the California coast and the west coast and the bumpy seas is going to follow you all the way down to Mexico. So no cruises right now. I wouldn't advise it. It's not going to be a smooth ride. It might be still safe, but just not a smooth ride. Bumpy ride for you. And so, so now let's go down the coast to maybe Portland and Point South, all right? Okay, so... Our next stop on this wonderful journey across America as we explore the weather that's affecting people across the country. So now we have our Sierra Nevadas. Look at these winter storm warnings in place in advance of our storm system. There might be even some snow showers moving across the I-80 area there, uh, maybe near Lake Tahoe. You can see Lake Tahoe right there, but you can also see some snow showers here in the, um, the Sierra Nevada. We're also looking at some rain here in northwestern California because that cold front there is close enough to the coastline that some of those showers are coming up from the south. So we are seeing some showers here north of San Francisco. We might see a few of those showers down as far south as San Jose later on today as that moves a little bit closer overall. But everything is moving generally from the south to the north. So we are looking at rain in northwestern California and that's going to be Eureka, are we talking Crescent City, Redwood, in those areas there north of San Francisco. So we're looking at those rain showers right now. Now that is going to pick up a little bit overnight tonight. We'll see a little bit of a break on Saturday before their big a bigger shot of rain come in Sunday and into Monday. The really heavy stuff comes in and we're going to see the state inundated with heavy rain especially come Monday and into Tuesday. So right now, these are teaser showers out ahead of the main show, that main frontal boundary and areas of low pressure off the coast there, a little bit further out to sea. So we're going to be seeing those guys make their way into the country. And then we are going to be taking a look at uh, some snow over the Rockies. And that'll be our last stop before we are done with this video. So the last stop on our trip is going to be across the Rockies and the High Plains where we are seeing some snow right now as we have an area of low pressure that is going to be uh, moving out into the plains and right now we are seeing some scattered light snow across the eastern half of the Rockies and the High Plains of Colorado and eastern Wyoming. So Cheyenne, we're looking at some uh, snow showers in your area as well as east of Denver and we're seeing some snow showers moving out of like Collins here in eastern Colorado, southeastern New Mexico. Look at that little area of low pressure right about there. You see that L? That's an area of low pressure and that is what's producing this snow and we're seeing this snow moving out across into the plains into Nebraska. There's Nebraska right there so we're going to be seeing that snow moving into Nebraska. Some of it's going to go into southern South Dakota and we're also going to see some of it moving into Can Kansas as well. So we're going to see another winter weather advisory uh, pop up across the Midwest later today as that snow makes its way out of the Rockies and the High Plains and into the Midwest and uh, into the uh, river, the Mississippi River Valley and points east. All right, so that is a look at the weather radar maps and the active weather at this time across the country. So this I used to do as part of the other video, as my main video, but now we are probably going to have 
this as a separate video. And I'm going to see how well this video does compared to the other videos. So we're going to have a separate video. But we're going to also do our City of the Day video. But maybe, I mean, no, maybe we won't have that today because um, all of that is going to depend on my ability to find a uh, map. So we will probably have a separate City of the Day video if I can find a webcam of that city a live webcam and we can talk about the weather for that specific city but that is something I will explore over the weekend so tomorrow's video will have a city of the day video so we will have city of the day video we will also have our tour of the weather video and then we'll have our weather forecast video with the maps and everything so okay so that'll do it for today's videos in this video thank you for uh leaving your likes comments and subscribe to me on tiktok youtube i'm trying to see what flavor works so i can get the uh, most growth out of them grow the channel and i think this was kind of fun it was actually kind of fun touring the country with guys with you guys talking about the active and current weather conditions that was taking place so um just gotta go because um has gotta edit the videos and publish the videos so you guys can enjoy and let me know what you think leave a like comment subscribe on both tiktok and youtube bye bye and have a great day and a good saturday